Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot believe I am about to say this, but Gladiator 2 is absolutely awesome and is a near perfect follow up to the original. I never thought I'd be saying that in a million years because I didn't think they needed to make this movie, but now after seeing it, I feel like we needed it. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing Gladiator 2. Now, of course, this is directed by Ridley Scott, who comes back to follow up his best film ever, his masterpiece. Gladiator, for me, is just an all-timer, a classic film that I love going back to and is the biggest reason why, for a long time, I never thought we needed a Gladiator 2. But okay, fine, you want to do it, that's cool. Don't have Ridley Scott direct it. Have some fresh talent come in here. And I know that might be blasphemy for some of you, but have people not seen a lot of the films that Ridley Scott has made over the last couple of years? Because uh, Napoleon sucked. Like, straight up. House of Gucci sucked. Uh, Last Duel was pretty good. I liked, I actually really liked The Last Duel, but he didn't, he didn't write that. He just directed it. Um, and then like the list can go on and on from there. The counselor wasn't great. And he just has this big laundry list of films that just seem to disappoint. He has some others that are fantastic, of course, but I've said multiple times on this channel how I found that he was overrated. And I feel like this film actually kind of made me a believer in him again, specifically from a directing standpoint and what he was absolutely able to elevate in here. And it's funny because my only issue with the film has nothing to do with him as a director. So there's going to be a lot of interesting aspects to talk about Gladiator 2, but I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So leave your thoughts down there, hit that like and subscribe button, and without further ado, let's dive into my pros. So number one thing, let's just keep talking about Ridley Scott for a second because he did a phenomenal job directing this movie. The pacing is like off the charts fantastic this film moves at only two hours and 28 minutes and that's crazy to say that only that it is probably the fastest moving ridley scott movie in like the last decade every single scene sequence just moves with such a brisk pace and an editing flair and style that just had me honed in and zoned in on every single moment with a lot of ridley scott movies even some of his great ones they drag at times, but this one, like I was always so fa fascinated to see, okay, we're focusing on Paul Mescal's character. Let's see where that goes. Oh, now we're doing this sequence and scene with Denzel Washington. How's this going to go? And I was always intrigued to see how it was going to tie in and follow up with something later was specifically with a lot of the scheming in here. And there's a lot of political scheming in here that maybe a little surface level, talk a little bit more about that towards the end of this video, but I thought was just intriguing. But at the same point in time to that, I like how this film builds off what Maximus really wanted in the original Gladiator. The themes of hope for Rome and dreamers is all there. And that is my thing, is that as, as brutal and as gory and as visceral as Gladiator can be, that main piece of the character, those themes and ideas of what Rome should be for, are still there from the original. Which makes this a near-perfect follow-up in my ideas, because it is bringing about the elements and the story things that maybe a lot of us just didn't really care to see where it was going, because it's like you kind of would just expect where it would go. Maybe not with some of the characters, but at least with the themes. But as history t foretells itself, it is going to go in a different route in a different time. And I think those ideas and themes sometimes do need someone to kind of push them a little bit forward. And I think it, that was just fantastic. And again, I love how Ridley Scott directed this movie. I love how he directed a lot of these different storylines and how they were brought together. And just in general, like... I'm someone who didn't really watch the trailer for this, so I was a little surprised with how they were actually able to bring to life some of the stuff from the original film into this and how it really further connected both of them. But I think that's actually one of the strongest aspects about Gladiator 2, and I was so satisfied with that. Alongside this, I think this is finally going to be the performance that shoots Paul Mescal up into a lot of people's like eyes and just vision. Now, I've loved him in everything I've seen him in. But 
I've been I was a little hesitant. Like, really? You're going to make Paul Mescal be a badass? Okay, let's see how that goes. And holy shit, he embodies Russell Crowe's like, charisma. Like, you would believe that Paul Mescal is playing Lucius. Like, this is Lucius, and this feels like he would have grown up to be this person. And again, Paul has a lot of these little tidbits that remind me of Russell Crowe's performance from the original one as Maximus. So again, very impressed with that. I think Paul is phenomenal in this. Denzel Washington, lots of talk has been about his performance, maybe Oscar praise, and I can see it. I think this is like Denzel Washington's like return to his training day era and that's not to say that like oh training day is my favorite performance of his it's one of my favorite performances but that scheming devilish kind of douchebag role that i just feel like denzel's so good at playing but like the best part of that that he's played is in training day and i think this is just up the ante and he is having a ball with it as well connie nielsen i was very hesitant, but excited to see how they were going to bring her back into this. And I think she was actually kind of the heart of the story. And I think now looking back at the original one, she was kind of also the heart of that one too. Pedro Pascal, uh, phenomenal. A role that could have easily become very surface level with some of the writing. He adds so much meat and emotion to. And his he has like one little monologue that I just passionately loved. And I was so for it. Well, Joseph Quinn and Fred Hesinger, who play the emperors of this. They're a lot of fun. Maybe a little bit too kooky for my taste, but I had a blast with them. You go to a Gladiator movie, there is one thing. Yes, you want that good story. You want those good performances. But you want fights. You want badass. You want awesomeness. And you get that. The sequences of action in here are stellar. The opening war sequence is fantastic. I think... Ridley Scott did a fantastic job with that. But all of the Coliseum stuff is like, obviously we're in a modern day era where more stuff can be accomplished now, but it is insane what they pull off here. And every single time I was on the edge of my seat, no matter how small and simple the fight was or how big and grandiose it was, it was amazing. And I think a lot of people are going to be satisfied with those. But I will give you a warning, they are gory, bloody, and as I mentioned, visceral. Very, very visceral. Get up, it looks amazing because of the cinematography, the visual effects look great. Overall, on a technical level, this film is fantastic as well. Let's talk about my one issue. I did have one little thing with Gladiator 2 that makes it the near-perfect follow-up, not the perfect follow-up to the film. And I think that one little tidbit is I wish the film was longer, which I never thought I'd be saying in a million years about a Ridley Scott movie, but we've seen in the past when he does make longer cuts, which I know there's a Napoleon longer cut. And I already talked shit about Napoleon. I'm not watching that longer cut. I haven't heard it made it better, but usually when he makes longer cuts, they're stronger, and I hope Gladiator 2 does have one that, because I think the meat and potatoes of this film is already fantastic, and I feel like adding 10 to 15 minutes more to this film maybe would even make it a little bit stronger, specifically in just a lot of the characters. Like, there's character moments that I wish we would have just took a little bit more time on, or just developing certain characters a little bit longer. Even the, the opening intro to this, I could have spent 10 minutes with Paul Mescal's life before it's all up anteed and turned over and brought back into where he wasn't supposed to be. And I really wish maybe they would have focused in more on that. Some of the political scheming, I think also can be a little bit surface level. And some of the writing is a little bit too kooky and maybe a little bit too cheesy at times, specifically with the emperors. But I mean, regardless enough, I, I think gladiator Two genuinely made me a believer in Ridley Scott again. I tried and true swords epic that follows up the original in an almost perfect manner. Paul Mescal is phenomenal. Denzel Washington is devilishly great. Pedro Pascal is, of course, fantastic. And Connie is the heart of this all. I did love my experience with this. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was badass. I cannot believe I'm still saying this. But Gladiator 2 is an A. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and comment down below your guys' thoughts. And, of course, until next time, stay classy.